Buddy, I know the leaves have you down in the dump, so I thought I'd give you your Christmas present early. Humbug, what is it? It's this leaf Christmas elf. It's a garden gnome. It's an elf. All right, well, it's more than the leaf's got for Lee Stepniak. Ah! Whoa, are you serious? <laughs> Mind blown. I need idea. <laughs> I'm dumb. Deli hard. We get to the game, please. Ah! The Leafs lose 6-3 to the St. Louis Blues because the St. Louis Blues are good. Last video, I told you a little bit about the hockey gods. You have made them angry, Leaf Nation. What you have done to anger them so, I cannot tell you, but you must repent immediately. First, the Leafs outplay the LA Kings and lose, and then they are doubled up by the Blues. It always sounds more ominous when it rhymes. How about this? Alexander Steen, number 20 for the St. Louis Blues, not always the case. For I can tell you of a time, Leaf Nation, when he was but a young man, a draft pick of the Toronto Maple Leafs, and he wore the number 10 on his back. But the Leafs betrayed him and traded him to the St. Louis Blues along with Carlo Koliakovo for Lee Stemniak, and that didn't really work out. That man, the one they refer to as Stemniak, wore the number 12. Add Alex Steen's Leafs number 10 with Lee Stemniak's Leafs number 12, and you get 22. Alex Steen's goal against the Leafs last night, his 22nd of the season. This is not a coincidence, you fools. Hast thou never seen the movie Final Destination? Against all odds, and despite getting terribly outshot to start the season, the Leafs won. The hockey gods have stepped in and are applying a correction to the universe. As you can tell, the Leafs are driving me a little crazy. What's that? You think I'm perfectly fine? <laughs> it's okay, guys. He thinks I'm fine. <laughs> are you guys enjoying Death Sember as much as I am? Are you guys excited to unwrap the Chicago Blackhawks candy on your Badvent calendar? I know Terrence here is excited, aren't you, Philip? Aren't you? Charles says he's excited. Now I wanted to do all sorts of crazy things in this video, and I have, but I also wanted to rant and rave about specific people and fire Carlisle and fire Notice, and I'm just not gonna do that. Because I think the problems are a little deeper than the Fraser Ranger pairing. I think the problems are a little deeper than Randy Carlisle. If the Leafs play the way they did last night against St. Louis, they shouldn't expect to win games. So it wouldn't be fair to go after certain people. And last night I tweeted the hashtag Fire Carlisle, and I kind of regret it. If I could, I would fire the Leafs, but I can't. I wish I knew how to quit you. Question of the game. It's not really a question. I have a theory, and I want to know what you think about it. Remember I went on a little bit of a rant last time the Leafs played the Penguins because that game was just such a gong show? Even though, 6-5, they managed to push the Penguins to a shootout, and by managed to push them, I mean they gave up a 4-1 lead, but still, they score some goals. I am of the opinion that you take Ranger and Fraser out. Don't lay blame on one of them, just pfft, that pairing can go for at least a few games just to see how things work out. And now the FNUF is back, you only need to replace those guys with one player, Lyles. And the question becomes, who among them is going to play defense? And the answer is no one is currently doing it anyway. Doesn't sound crazy yet, does it? I'm thinking you have a top six, not necessarily in this order, of FNUF, Gunnarsson, Franzen, Gardner, Riley, Lyles. And you try to beat everyone 7-6. You know nine times out of 10, Bernier and Reimer are gonna be pretty darn good. You got Kessel up front, JVR up front, put him with Bozak, whatever, Kadri's there, Lupul's there, Clarkson's... Raymond's there. Try anything but what you're doing. Because here's something from a conversation that I had yesterday about advanced stats that was just perfect. First of all, advanced stats are obviously not perfect. Obvi. And part of the reason they don't tell you everything, and it's the same with traditional stats as well, is it talks about the result. Corsi measures shots, and shots missed, and blocked, and those, those are all results. It's what leads up to that result that is very hard to put in a number form, which is why you should focus on something called zone entries. I don't really know how prevalent it is yet, but here's what it is basically. Entering the zone, weird, right? But just like when the Leafs play the Bruins and Phil Kessel, rather than go at Chara, will go at his defense partner, that's what every team is doing to the Leafs. And Paul Ranger is the goat du jour, but if you look at some of the raw, rougher stats that are out there so far, attack 
Packers go at Mark Frazier like he's a piece of raw meat and they gnaw him down to the bone. And again, I don't want to go, this guy's brutal because I think he's hurt still. Fellow Leafs Nation writer Cam Schron went in depth on Mark Fraser, so if you want to read his article on it, go to theleafsnation.com. Watch the game on Saturday if you got the Blues game PVR or the Kings game PVR or, or whatever. Look at who goes after who when they enter the zone. And just because one defender gets attacked more than the other doesn't mean they're bad. It's when that defender is attacked and the forward gets their desired result, a goal. So anyway, what do you think? 7-6, should they give it a shot? Might not want to go shot for shot with the Chicago Blackhawks, but maybe another team. That's all for this one. Click like in this video, click subscribe on my YouTube channel, follow me on Twitter and all that lovely stuff, and Blackhawks, be gentle. For I know of a time, Leaf Nation, when he was just a young man, <laughs> What are we doing? <laughs>